Hey everybody, thank you so <laughs> much for tuning in. It's Tuesday, right? Yes, I think so. So I don't know what you're doing on a Tuesday, but the fact that you're tuning in live with us rocks. We really appreciate it. We are doing this video from Surlatov headquarters right here in Seattle, Washington. I would love to know where you're tuning in from. So please write to us. We wanna know questions, where you're from, how you do Thanksgiving, because today, it's all about the turkey. I'm Joel Gameron, national chef for Sir La Table, and this is... I'm Meredith Abbott, culinary content manager. And we basically spend our entire lives here at Sir La Table <laughs> worrying about recipes and how to perfect them. And I think the goal with today is how do you attack this beautiful bird that's so intimidating for people, right? Yeah, and it's a big one too. That's an 18 pounder. Yeah, it's, it's me as a bird. This is a big <laughs> bird. And I think the reality is having the perfect you know, Thanksgiving yep. turkey is super intimidating. Yep. People uh, really want to bring it out on that perfect platter. Mm -hmm. They want to give it to their families. And the reality is there's really easy tips to get you there. Yep. Um, but there are little levels in between. For sure. Keeping it simple is the best way to go. Yeah. And everyone's worried about like a big disaster. Do you have a Thanksgiving disaster story? I've got an old one. My grandma <laughs> decided to cut some corners one Christmas and use a pre-made crust and left the parchment paper on it so my cousins and I were biting through our pumpkin pie carefully pulling out <laughs> pieces of parchment paper and hiding them so we wouldn't offend grandma. I love it. Is grandma still around? Meh. Okay got it. So grandma's not offended by this story. Grandma's not offended. Uh, mine what is I, yeah I took over Thanksgiving when I went to cooking school and then I did not realize that the sugar was salt and I <laughs> sugared my turkey. We Ooh. had candied turkey oh. that year. And um, it was disgusting. That sounds awful. Yeah, so I've been through it all. I've messed <laughs> all of it. Um, but you know, today it's again, how do you attack this bird in the best possible way? And I think Thanksgiving is the best time of year. And at Sur La Table, we celebrate. This is yep. our Super Bowl. And so we have our turkey out. We've got all of our ingredients ready to go. And we're taking live questions. Do we have any live questions yet? We've got one. Okay. EJ Kasser from Instagram asked, how long should the turkey defrost before cooking? Let me tell you, this big guy was frozen solid yes. as of last Friday. Yes. And it went into the refrigerator on Friday. And when I pulled it out this morning, it was still kind of, I call it permafrost, mm. um, where it's not frozen solid, but it still had some crystals. So what you want to do, so a couple days couple days to defrost your turkey. Um, the safe way to defrost it in a pinch, yep. clean, sanitize your sink out, yep. Ooh. fill it with cold water, and plunge your bird into the cold water. Yes. Not hot water, cold water. Don't try water. and rush this process. No, no, no. Yeah. Not safe, but yeah, good question. It's usually two, three days. Yep. And of course, the cold water method works. You can absolutely put it in your fridge. It will slowly defrost. We've got another one from Bob on Facebook. Brine or no brine, ah. wet or dry brine. And Bob, I have to say, what a perfect segue because <laughs> we're going right into the brine. So there's two schools of thought, dry and wet brine. Mm -hmm. So while I talk through those, why don't you cut up our vegetables, yep. okay? And we're gonna cut up the vegetables. You know, this is called mirepoix, if anyone knows what mirepoix is. Mm -hmm. At cooking school, this is like the first thing they show you. So it's always carrots, celery, and onion, unless you're in New Orleans. Correct, and yes. then it's the holy trinity. And it's the holy trinity. So for everyone joining us from the <laughs> south, we wanted to make sure we plug you. So we've got our turkey, it's out kind of room temperature, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do a dry brine, right, Meredith? Correct. So dry brine, um, we like doing it because A, it's a lot easier than a wet brine. Yes. A wet brine means you're going to take this bird, you're going to put it in a big bucket or your bathtub. Or a cooler. Or a cooler. Who has room for that in their fridge? It's yeah. tough. So what a dry brine does, and I've got a mixture of a little bit of sugar mixed with salt here, and we're going to over salt our turkey. And what basically this does is, is I don't know, and this is kind of crazy, and I always ask this, but have you ever salted a slug before? No. You've never salted a slug as a no. kid? No. I know that sounds gross, but some people have, and what happens to the slug, it's not the nicest thing, but it kind of shrivels up, and it draws out all the water. Same thing happens uh. in cooking. Whether you're salting a turkey or an eggplant, if you salt it and let it sit for a while, it will start to pull out the juices. Got it. Now, why that matters is juices is water. Yeah. Water tastes like water. Nothing. Yeah. So you're taking out the nothing and concentrating 
the flavor. So that's really good about this. I, that's why I like the dry brine. The wet brine mm -hmm. goes in a salt and sugar solution. So oh. it still draws out the water, but it's sitting in water. So it actually it. opens up the turkey and it plumps it up. If you weigh a turkey after you wet brine it, it's actually a lot plumper and juicier because mm. it's filled with water. It kind of through osmosis. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're getting sciencey. We're getting sciencey, baby. <laughs> so I know this seems like a lot of salt, and I don't know if you guys can even zoom in or see, but I'm really over seasoning the outside because there is no possible way to season the inside. Would you ever get up underneath the skin and oh, salt the yeah. actual meat? Heck yeah, 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 absolutely. And we're gonna make kind of a butter yep, flat, right? Sure. So I've seasoned our entire turkey with a really liberal hand of salt. You can either go in like this and just kind of shake it. Look how much I'm putting on there. I mean, it's literally yep. le letting it rain, right? Cool, in the cavity as well. And then you cut up some veggies, I right? Did. And some citrus. Yep. Well, Do you like citrus? I like a little bit of citrus in my poultry. Just yeah. kind of brightens and livens it up. Yep. I'm also going to give you some handful of herbs. Yeah, you are. To do. So we got rosemary. Yeah, rosemary, thyme, parsley. You know, it's kind of the quintessential poultry. Yep. Good um, little trick with herbs is just give them a clap. And this will take out the oils of the herbs and smell. Mm. Yeah, it just kind of busts them open, right? A little parsley? Yep. All right, this is going in. So all these in. One common misconception when it comes to turkey, don't put anything hot inside the cavity, meaning don't put hot stuffing in there, don't put hot vegetables in there if you caramelize them and put them in there, because when you have something hot from the inside and it's cooking and it's cold from the outside, uh -huh. it can cause sanitation stuff. So you only want cold things to go into the cavity. Now I get asked a lot if I put dressing in my turkey. Mm. I 100% do not. You don't, why? No, just like you were saying, this the safety sanitation thing. Um, for the stuffing to be completely cooked, yeah. it needs to be 165 degrees. So by the time your dressing on the inside comes to 165 degrees, yep. your breasts are gonna be just like a desert. They're yeah. so dry. P.S. I like crispy stuffing, and it doesn't get crispy yeah. in there. Yeah, I you like don't get the get crispy, crispy bit. Yeah. So that's just me. All right, trussing the bird. Hold what on. Just, oh yeah, what do you got? Oh, well, yeah. I'm making an herb butter right yes. now. So, same herbs that Joel stuffed inside the turkey. I'm yeah. just gonna chop up really quick and mash with some uh, cracked black pepper and some, we have some Kerrygold butter mm. that we're gonna put with it. Love so. me some Kerrygold butter. I don't know if you guys can see the color on that, but good butter is really important to invest in with turkey. Mm -hmm. It makes it rich, gives it that golden color. It really, really kind of opens up the depth. Well, and turkey doesn't have a lot of fat in it either, so we really need to add a little bit of extra fat in it to really shuttle those flavors around yeah. and baste the bird while we go. Absolutely. Sorry. Okay, we've got a question from Jan. How big is that turkey? <laughs> Sweetheart, this is a big boy. It's this like, is 18 pounds, is mm -hmm. that right? Normally turkeys are like 14 pounds. <laughs> I mean, so it kind of depends. This one had a little bit too much to eat. Um, We're gonna it, feed headquarters with this after yes. it comes out of the oven. Yeah. So and Natalie we wrote in, and she has a really good question. Great. When hosting a big group, one big turkey or two small turkeys? Ooh, what are your thoughts? I would go two small ones just because I don't want my oven on for 12 yes. hours. I'd yes. rather have two small ones or three chickens if you don't want to do turkey. Yep, yep, absolutely, yeah. And it's just easier to handle, mm -hmm. easier to break down, they cook a lot faster, more evenly. When you have a big bird like this, and we want to kind of attack a big one, because I know a lot of people do do that at home, it's harder to cook everything evenly. I mean, this will be a very even recipe, but it is harder. Yep. Cool, so you got pepper in there? Pepper in here with our nice, really simple ratchet mill. Yep, love I'm it. I'm gonna put this whole block of butter in here. Yeah, you are. Do, 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 do. And with my hands, clean hands, I'm just gonna mash Massage. it all together. Yeah, or do you wanna do it because you're gonna have. Sure. So non clean hands. Yes. <laughs> Joel has turkey hands. Yes. I'm gonna keep mine. Just wanna make sure everyone can see this. So, really soft butter. Yep. And this is called a compound butter. Now, obviously, this is for turkey, but if you have rolls or things yeah. on the table, you can make butters like this with truffle salt. We sell all different oh, yeah. types of spices. And you can mix them into your butters, freeze them, I or mean, not freeze them, but yeah, refrigerate you can. them. Yeah, you can but um, refrigerate them and they'll become hard again and you can put them on the table for, you know, table Oh, butter. it's lovely. It's really nice. So yeah, you're gonna get up in there first. And so Joel's gonna use his fingers. You can also use the back of a spoon mm. to loosen up this skin. Yeah, and I know there, there's just no pleasant way to no. do this. I feel a little bit like 
you know, a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's really not pleasant and it's not pretty. But the, the trick is, is to kind of work your fingers <laughs> yeah. and not rip the skin, yeah. right? And if you do, it's not the end of the world, right. don't freak out, but you're kind of moving your whole hand down. This is the breast, right? Correct. So when you think about a turkey, this turkey, I always think about Hawaii. This turkey is chilling in the sun <laughs> in Hawaii. So it's got its head here, its breastplate is up, right? You can even tuck his hands behind his head and yeah, be chilling. Yeah, you can do that if right? you want. <laughs> but we're not doing that today. No. So we're gonna kind of slowly move the butter under the skin. And what does this do, Meredith? So that's just gonna help, again, flavor the meat, mm -hmm. and it's gonna work as a basting. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna get a ton in there. Yep. And it really, this really makes a difference. I mean, this seriously makes a huge difference. Now, once you kind of have some here, you can use your other hand and just kind of move it all the way down. Yeah. Right? Do your best to get in. Sometimes the skin can be really tight and hard yeah. to release from the actual meat. So what yep. Joel's, you just kind of paint it. Oh, yeah. Come on. This part's fun. Even if you have kids, they can do oh, this. Oh, absolutely. Right? But don't do vegetable oil or olive oil. First of all, olive oil, you won't even taste it after yeah. three hours in the oven. But butter has a little bit higher uh, of a burning point, so it's going to caramelize much better. It's going to give yeah. you browning much more, and I think it just tastes better. Oh, it just, it, it, yeah, you're right. It adds a richness that... Um, you just won't get with the other two. Yep, and I'm really getting into all the little nooks and crannies. I know you're thinking, ooh, gross. You can wear gloves if you want. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but really get in there. I mean, come on, this is once a year you cook a turkey like this. Yeah, you got to totally You got to do it. And yep. we're going to actually scrape all this extra butter too and put it in the pan. So we have it as part of the drippings. We have a question from Sandy. What herbs are you mixing with the butter? Same herbs that we put in. We have rosemary, thyme, parsley. You can add sage to it. Um, I wouldn't really use tarragon or dill because it's just too tender of an herb. Any of these hearty fall herbs, whatever yeah. you like, you can do it in different ratios. If you really like rosemary, a rosemary lemon chicken, oh my, or Come turkey, on. that would just be Game funny. over, Come people. On. This is one thing I would say, <laughs> an unsung hero of the herb world that for turkey just sings, tarragon. It does, but I would add it later. I would fold it into the gravy. That's fine, yeah, but I love tarragon. All right, so we have a little Sweet more butter tarot. here. We've got butter on the outside. I'm gonna give my hands a wash and you're gonna trust? Yes. Okay. Oh, before you uh, wash your hands, I'm gonna have you put the turkey in. Transfer? Transfer it, please. See these guns? It's for transferring turkeys. I just don't want turkey hands yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're putting it in a roasting rack in a roasting pan. So Joel, in culinary school, we learned a method of trussing a turkey where you take the wings and you kind of tuck them back behind yep. the shoulders. Yep. When I use an actual roasting pan, I don't do that just because the slope of the roasting rack kind of tucks those wings up anyway, and we're going to tie them. So everybody's got their own method. You abs, if you want it to be pretty, the purpose of trussing, the main purpose is to, um, so your turkey cooks evenly. So we've got these wings that are kind of hanging out. We've got the legs that are kind of hanging out. We're going to make a nice, compact, tight ball of a turkey. Why? So it cooks evenly. Love it. Oh, oh. you're washing your hands. Yes. So uh, Jessica, how do you flip a big turkey after it's been cooking in the oven? Good question. Flip. Jessica, do you ever flip a turkey? I do not flip a turkey. You don't need to flip a turkey. As long as you keep basting it, and butter will kind of slowly melt, yep. so it will keep it brown. So there's no reason to have to flip it in the oven. Um, but if you spatchcock your turkey, which is a very Ooh. big trendy thing right now, which basically Super means cool. taking out the backbone and opening it up. If you ever had chicken under a brick, yeah, it's like that. Super cool. And if you do that, it's not a bad idea to flip it, but you really don't have to do it. Okay, so will you point out what I just did with the twine on this side that I can't see? Yes, everybody? yes. I don't know if you guys are getting in there. So she put it underneath the legs, and now she's crossing over the legs. So it's like its legs are crossed. I'll flip the bird around so you can see it. Yeah. Not a fancy knot. No. I'm just making a bow. By Cut. the way, if all you can do is just tie the legs together yeah. because this whole ring a major just intimidates you, go for it. It's absolutely fine. This kind of just holds it more compact, but at least if you tie the legs together, it will be kind of one consistent 
beautiful shape. Yep. All right, so we're getting ready to move this to the oven, right? And we've got butter all over it. We've got a little bit of uh, aromatics in the bottom. So these are gonna kind of lift up the flavor and perfume the bird. And I'm gonna put it in an oven. And we like to start ours at Sur La Table here, 450 mm -hmm. for 30 minutes. Sounds scary. Sounds scary, because 450 is almost That's as high. high as your oven goes, right? But we're trying to caramelize the outside. We're yeah. trying to almost sear it, which is why you, know, you don't have to turn it. So it will be brown after 30 minutes, and then we're gonna turn down the temperature. And why is that important, Meredith? Well, because we don't wanna burn our turkey. <laughs> but absolutely, but also the higher the temperature you cook on, the more the meat kind of tightens yeah. up. So when you do it low and slow, your turkey will be like velvet. That's why some people do sous vide, mm -hmm. which we love sous vide yes. turkeys. We sell amazing sous vide products. So we've got a nice big turkey rack. It's elevated off the top, very important. And this is going right into the oven. Yep. And we took out the oven um, shelves, right? So all of them are out except for the bottom. Yeah, very, very bottom. And that's just so your turkey's not too close to the top of the oven. Yeah, awesome. So, so turkey's hanging out. Right? Yep. I like to set timers. We all have smartphones yep. now. So 30 minute timer and then a timer every little bit. You can paint a little bit from the juices. You can get a little, <laughs> I get excited. And then that's when the house starts smelling really, yep. really good. Yeah. Awesome. So all the giblets and you know, I'm into my scraps. Oh, totally. What do we do with those? So we have a pot of some broth going. Yeah. The broth was started with a little bit of water and all of all the goodies that you find on the inside of your turkey. So it's the neck, it's the liver, it's the heart, and some other things. Um, they all went to a sauce pot with water, and as I was prepping those vegetables for Joel to put in the roasting rack, I was putting the trim in this pot. That's yeah. basically how you make stock. Yeah. We're just making a stock, fortifying it. I've got some herbs floating around in here. And let me just say one thing. If you want your Thanksgiving to go from like, it's good, to like your eyes rolling in the back of your oh, head, yeah. Make your own stock. <laughs> Correct. Just that step. I don't care what every else you do, make your own stock because the gelatin from the bones oh, yeah. go into the beautiful uh, water. They, they make it thick, they make it viscous, they make it robust, they make it rich. Yeah. And so it's really, really important to do this step. I know it seems like an extra step. It's worth it. You agree? 100% and it's not taking any more time. You already yeah, have already the trim and the, the turkey pieces yes. to go in here. So while your turkey's roasting, just have it under a low simmer. It's barely yeah. bubbling. Absolutely. So Rick and has a really good it. question. Is there ever a time to use a cooking bag? What, do you, what are your thoughts on this? So I grew up in the Midwest. Yeah. I'm, an, I'm an Iowa born and raised. Love. And one of my grandmas always used a cooking bag, um, but she would also do the turkey in this like crazy slow cooker, turkey cooker looking thing. Slow cooker in Iowa, dude. Where was my invite? I need, I need a part of that. Seriously, it was on, it was <laughs> that on the back good. porch. <laughs> that sounds like a Midwest <laughs> doozy. Well, for those, of you who, yeah, for those of you who don't know what a cooking bag is, it is a giant bag you stick your turkey in, right? Yep. And then you put that in the oven. The bag won't burn or anything like that. And what it does is it holds all the moisture. Yeah. It's basically a sauna yes. for the turkey. The reason why I like it is it's a really tender bird. It's kind of foolproof. Right. The reason why I don't like it is because it doesn't get crispy. Yeah, you don't get that crispy skin. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is delicious. And if, especially if you're nervous, about cooking for a crowd or you have a lot of other things going on. Yeah. Um, I know timing is always a huge issue for yes. everybody. Um, I think we should definitely talk about that in this. I like to do the majority of the work the day before because day of, I want to be hanging out with my friends or family, whoever you're spending Thanksgiving with. Uh, day, day before, like day of Thanksgiving to Meredith's point, I don't cook. I Barely. I, I do my vegetables. Yeah, I assemble. Yeah. I assemble. I mean, I don't want to smell like, to your point, I don't yeah. want to smell like turkey. I don't want to be sweaty. I want to have a beer. I want yeah. to like catch up and have those awkward family moments. <laughs> I don't want to miss out on that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we've got our great, or we've got our stock. We've yep. got a cooked bird. Do you want to bring that bad yep. boy over? Sure do. Um, and what we're going to do is, is we're going to show you how to carve the turkey, but also how to make a badass gravy. Totally. I'm a gravy. This is where half of this comes from, <laughs> is gravy. I could take a straw to gravy. I love, love gravy, but it has to be made right. 
and a lot of people don't know how to do it. So we've got a nice moated cutting board. Yep. Important for this, right? Beautiful. Uh, get me a wood spoon. Yeah, this is going to be kind of rustic. You can absolutely transfer. That's what I love about these handles right here in the roasting rack. But, yes, speaking of butt, <laughs> I, like <to, laughs> I like to put the wood spoon kind of into the butt of the yep. turkey. And then a nice, oops, let's just try it. There and you go. And tongs in the other tongs. side. And it's nice and hot. We just took it out. Now, one thing to think about is you need to rest this. Yep. I am not a fan, and I know you are. You can turn that on a nice high heat. Um, I'm not a fan of putting tin foil over it. What's your thoughts? Yes and no. It depends on how long I'm going to let it rest for. Right. Um, I say no because I like the crispy bits, but I'm a fan of eating things. I don't care. I don't want my food piping, piping hot. I want it warm. Warm, right. But I know a lot of people want piping hot food. So when I tent it, it's more for everybody else's comfort, Absolutely. not mine. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I listen, if you tent it, it's going to steam. The, the, the outer, you know, the, the actual skin itself is going to get a little soggy and soft, but it will stay warmer a little bit longer. But by taking it out now, you're on the clock for about an hour, hour and a half before it gets cold. Or Correct. Before it gets right, right, right. So it's got tons of Yeah, because you're still in that nice, compact little yes. turkey. So this, to me, you're taking out way before your guests show up. Yeah. This is hanging out. You haven't even heard the doorbell ring or anything like that happen. I've got some. Cool. Yeah. You got some burner stuff going? Yeah, I'm just going to move the move stock over, over to the side and so we yeah, can use we that don't need back it, yeah. burner. So. Wait, hold on. We do have a question from Danielle. Hit it. How often should I baste the turkey? What's your thoughts? I feel like, again, I don't want to be babysitting the oven, so I go in like every 30 minutes? What about you? Yeah, I'm about the same. I don't baste a ton. Don't, yeah, and don't freak out about it, right? Yeah. Let me, one misconception on basting. Yeah. It doesn't make your turkey any juicier. Correct. There's no, like, just by taking a brush or by spritzing, you know, <laughs> juices all over it, it's not going to go in the bird and make it juicier. But what it does is, is it keeps the outside browning and it keeps right. flavor kind of building You're up. You're redistributing all of those Yeah, when you paint juices. this, exactly, yeah. when you paint it with juices, the juices caramelize, right. they crisp. So it depends on how dark you want your bird. I'm a big 30 minutes fan. Well, too. and one, one thing about opening up your oven too many times is it really lowers that temperature of your oven, Good which call. is going to slow down the cooking process. So absolutely. let's be honest, nobody wants to wake up at 4.30 in the morning to get their bird in the oven. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Julie asks, what temp did you lower your oven to? We did 350. I actually sometimes do 325 or 300. It's up to you. Um, it takes about 20 minutes per pound at 350. Because all you're really looking for is a final cook temp yeah. of 165 degrees. And Joel will show you with our favorite thermometer, the yeah. Thermapen. It's an instant read, super fast. You can have the probe comes out at all different angles so you don't have to, you know, kind of... Yeah, let me say something. There's a million thermometers out There's there. Tons. We sell a lot of them. We love yeah. thermometers. The thermal pen really is yeah. the one that's kind yeah. of trending right now with all the chefs. It's just such but an accurate But there's a reason read. why. Yeah, there's yeah. a total reason why. So I like to measure the temperature as it comes out of the oven in a couple different right. places. So the first one that you read everywhere is you should do it between the leg here, the thigh, and the breast. So right, right. into here, which is the thickest part of the bird. And we're sitting at about 155. You know, Meredith said it should be 165. So if you see 155, it's not a bad thing because this is still resting and it's still cooking. And if it undercooks, we'll show you what to do. Yeah. There's still a little bit. So we have a solve for that. Then I also like to actually measure the breast because they cook at different times. Absolutely. Right? So the breast, if you guys can see, is 172. So thigh is at 155. The breast is at 172. So it gives this huge dilemma. Okay. What do we are you, do? Yeah. Are you going to, like, I've seen everything from putting an ice pack on the top of the breast for the first what? 20 minutes of cooking. So it slows down the cooking. I've seen it all. That's crazy. I know. And the reality is the breasts will be nice and juicy. They're cooked on the bone. Don't worry about it if the breasts go a little bit higher in temp than the thigh. I will say what I did this morning when I got this bad boy in the, in true Thanksgiving style at 530 in the morning. Yes. Um, once we lowered the temperature down to about 350 degrees, the skin up here was getting a little dark too fast and I knew it still had like three hours in the oven. So I did take some foil and just kind of loosely set the Good foil tip. on top. So That's a great tip. it's going to allow it to still cook, but not get the skin too dark. And then about an hour and a half into the roasting, yeah. I took the foil off. So then it would continue to get nice and crispy. Yeah. 
You did a good job. This is a beautiful well, bird. Thanks. Okay, we're letting this hang out. It's chilling, and we are going to start our gravy. Oh, we got another one. You want to ask that one? Oh, and a shout out to Karina from Norway. Hi. Yes. What's up, Norway? Holy moly. Wait, you do Thanksgiving in Norway? Oh, I guess so. Uh, where's my invite? Or she's just a really big fan of Sir Latam. I love it. Thanks for Either way. In. Yes. Hi. Very cool. Um, we also have a question from Jennifer. How long do you cook the turkey overall? Minutes per pound recommendation. Like, you probably came in right as we were uh, talking about that. So it's about like 20 minutes per pound. Yep. Um, at 350. At 350. If your turkey is going into the oven straight from the refrigerator, which we don't recommend, it's going to take a little bit longer because your turkey's colder. So yeah, we like to let it sit at room temperature for about an hour before we do um, all of our goodness to it. I'm with you. Okay. Now, hopefully you guys can get into this. And by the way, <laughs> can someone in the world, I don't care who is out there listening, turn this into a car? Freshener. <laughs> this is I, this is the best smell on the face of the planet. You've got all those fat from the turkey. Mm -hmm. You've got all the mirepoix, right? The carrot, celery, yep. and onion, the, the dripping. Oh, this is gold. Yeah. This is the nectar. I mean, if you guys can see it, so sit, we did the exact same treatment to this turkey as we did to the one that we just showed you. Yep. So what I just did is I took all-purpose mm -hmm. flour, right? We call it AP flour. AP flour. And I put it right in the bottom of the tray. And I don't know if you guys can see this. So if you can get it tight. Kind of a, a product plug. Getting it, there is a reason why you spend money on a roasting pan. And mm. it is so you can cook it over direct heat, just like Joel's doing. Yeah, the cheap ones just kind of They fold. warp, they pop, they burn, they scorch. This is a Demeyer. We also, we did our first one in an all clad. These are nice, heavy, thick. They won't warp. We're cooking straight over high heat on yeah. a commercial a range. Yeah, exactly. I'm so with you on that, Meredith. Yeah. And so, what, and also it doesn't, like you said, to the bottom, it doesn't scorch. Right. And yeah. right now, we just added a little bit of flour yep. and it looks like a disaster in this pan. <laughs> you're gonna be at home and you're gonna be like, I screwed it up, it's all over. But this is exactly how it should look. Oh, you yeah. wanna put the flour in mm -hmm. and cook it out. You cannot add stock to this and then add flour. No. You'll taste the flour, it tastes like glue. It's gross. Yeah. 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 Not, Not nice. that I know what glue tastes like. I mean, maybe you do. I was a kid. No I was judgments. a kid. Yeah, no judgments. <laughs> so I like to move to a wood spoon, but I have a whisk yeah. nearby so I can kind of scrape the bottom, right? And then we've got a little vino. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. So there's a lots of um, thoughts on how to do your gravy. Both Joel and I like this rustic approach. Uh, we're going to strain out all of these vegetables later, but I really like the keeping all of this in yeah. and letting it, the flavor keep permeating. Oh, yeah. We're keeping all of the fond, which is the brown bits that's on the bottom of right your pan. There. Yep. And we're getting some color on these vegetables. Which so, is beautiful. By the way, this Demeyer pan, I'm just holding the handle. Look at this. Yeah, that's, It's over that's, high heat and it gutsy. came out of the oven. <laughs> and it's not hot. That's, I mean, it's awesome. It's pretty amazing. It's really nice. Okay, you're gonna go in with a couple glugs? Yeah, so I'm gonna do some glugs of wine. This is deglazing, so. Try not to hit your mouth. I might on the way back. <laughs> Not gonna lie. All right, so we're just adding enough, and I, I might go with a little bit more, just enough to cover, right? That's perfect. You know, it's wine. It's, it's wine. wine. <laughs> and you wanna use wine that you'll actually drink. Yes. So the first thing you wanna do is cook away this wine, yes. right? And so you wanna cook the wine until you can put your nose in it and it doesn't burn that hot. when you smell in. Yeah. yeah. So that's one, and also, and you wanna cook it since we're at Sur La Table until it's a sec, which means almost dry in France. In France. In yes. France. In, in France. Yes, in France. So cooking it to almost dry. You want to kind of hear, and you can kind of hear the vegetables talk to you mm -hmm. when it's at the time to add the next step. So you want to scrape like that. Yep, I'll continue scraping. Yep, and then I've got a chinois here. Um, this is a tool that I have at home that I use, no joke, at least Bi-weekly. Oh, I use it instead of a colander. Yeah, 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 for pasta. I mean, <laughs> Everything. I use this a lot. And I know it seems kind of like a niche tool, but it's such fine mesh. If you've ever used cheesecloth before, it's like permanent yep. cheesecloth. I mean, it really gets everything out. So for something like this rustic gravy, it really makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jennifer asks, it always seems like I carve when it's too hot. Can heat change the texture of carving? Good question. So my answer to that is, I totally hear you, and that's why resting is really important. Yeah. So if you give it 45 minutes to an hour, 
um, 100% it won't be too hot to touch and that's a really big step but the texture of the meat will change if you don't rest it. Correct. It, all of the juices, instead of being absorbed back up into the meat, will just run out all over your board. Yes. Now, I want to say one other thing here. We've kind of skimmed the top of this mm -hmm. uh, stock as it's going, and I think we're almost dry at this point. Yeah, really we're, we're getting there. Yeah, we're really in a good spot. So, one thing to think about is if you don't know how to skim by taking a ladle and taking all the impurities off the top, all the little kind of fat drippings and stuff, you can save that in a little jar and use that for scrambled eggs or your potatoes. Oh! But if you don't know how to do that, we have really good fat separators here. Yeah. They're the, my favorite ones, and you put them in the actual top, mm -hmm. and then you wait a second, and the fat separates from yeah. the, and then you just hold them like it a pancake. It looks just like a liquid measure cup. It's the best. Yeah. It's the absolute best. All right. So, I'm going to pour this in. Cool, just some of it. And you're gonna scrapey scrape. Yep, scraping some more, getting that fond to release from the bottom of the yes. pan. Yes, look at that. I had turned down the temperature a little bit because we were talking and I didn't so want to scorch it, but it's gonna go back up now. I'll switch with you. I'm gonna throw some more herbs in this because I like a really I love you. gravy. I love you, I love you, do it. And I, can I do a little black pepper? Yeah, absolutely. I like a spicy gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these are amazing. You can kind of change how thick the black this. pepper. Woo, look at oh, this. Yeah. This is, a, it's. Dude. No lump. That's where it's at. By the way, if you're Smells not amazing. Yeah, and if you're not a wine person, you don't have to. Just brandy is really good, but if you don't do any or alcohol, no alcohol, yeah, you stock. can do vinegar or just stock. Absolutely. Yeah. Tim asks, do you see a difference or a preference between fresh and frozen turkeys? No. Well, can you even get fresh turkeys unless you go to a turkey farm? Yeah, but I, I have the done the fresh stuff. turkey thing, and the answer is no. It, yeah. it, it holds up perfectly in the freezer. Yeah. 95% of the turkeys you're going to get are going to be frozen. There's yep. not a huge difference. Just make sure to thaw it out. Cool? Yep. All right. We are going to carve the turkey. How's our gravy looking? I'm going to add, will you pour a little bit more stock sure. into this? It's pretty thick right now, but we're going to let it kind of bubble. Yeah, do it all. You want it all? Let's do it all because we're going to let it bubble. Listen, there's never enough gravy for me. That's perfect. And as things bubble and cook for a while, the... Um, Liquids will reduce a little bit. There's some evaporation, so it'll get thicker. Okay. And I don't like gloppy gravy. Who likes gloppy gravy? Mm. Some people might like gloppy gravy. So we've got a couple of Wustoff tools. We've got a carving fork. We've got a nice carving knife. Now, the reason why we have a knife, and this one's great because it's got the divots so things won't stick to yep. it. But the reason why there is a carving knife as opposed to using like a chef knife mm -hmm. is because it's bendy. Look at this. Do you see yep. how flexible that is? Why is that important, Meredith? Well, because you want to be able to carve around the bones. Yeah, there's joints and bones. And so this is just too bulky. It's going to rip the turkey apart. Well, this is kind of fine tipped and beautiful. And you're thinking to yourself, you know what? I would just use that on Thanksgiving. Are you kidding me? I oh. use this knife all I the time. I carve steak. Yes. I take skin off of salmon with mine. It's a huge yep. knife to have. I mean, it is a core knife to have. So getting a carving knife is fantastic. I love the flexibility of it. And Joel, so you said that you started taking over Thanksgiving a while ago. Yeah. But do any of you, like, do family members and people from all parts of your life call you and ask you and, like, text you on Please. Thanksgiving? Like, what do I do? What do I do? On the Butterball hotline, sweetie pie. <laughs> How about you? Oh, I don't do a turkey on Thanksgiving because my sister, I hope you're watching because I'm making fun of you, um, <laughs> has me on speed dial all day. She hosts her in-laws. Oh, and she, which is a big deal. That's intense. Yeah, yeah. she did lots of kids running around, and she, yeah. She does. But I thing. bought her that carving set last year. She's like, oh, I'll just get an electric knife. Sure, you can get an electric knife, but I'm like, no, this is come this on, is the way sister. To go. You got a chef for her sister. Absolutely. Let's, let's use a carving knife. I, I'm with you. So, <laughs> we took off the twine, yep. cool, so, so everyone can see. So now the legs are kind of loose, and then the first place you're going to attack is in between the thigh and the leg and the breasts. So right here. And you'll see, I'm just using the actual tip of the knife. And I'm doing this a little backwards just so you guys can see it at home. But I'm using just the tip of the knife. So I'm not going like this. I'm just kind of sneaking it in there. Yeah, you're not get, putting any force no. into this at all. We're actually not cutting through bones. Yep. So if you start to feel like you're hitting up against something, pull your knife back a little bit, readjust. Yep, absolutely. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a towel. This is, I always have a sacrifice towel. 
Um, for Not one of your pretty towels. No, not one of your pretty towels, but I have a towel that's going to get washed before the big meal. And it's just one to help mop up the juices, but it also gives you grip. And you'll yeah. notice I'm wearing gloves too. Yep. That's because it's still a little warm. And at the same time, people are going to be eating this. And so I just want to make sure that, you know. Your restaurant I'm day. I'm a chef guy. You don't touch ready I'm to a eat chef food. Guy. <laughs> so I'm throwing my thumb into the actual. <laughs> We've got the peanut gallery out yeah, here. Yeah, too much peanut that. gallery. We have too much fun here at Thriller Top. So I'm putting my thumb in here, and I just want you guys to hear. We're going to be really silent, but I'm going to kind of open the leg away from the breast. So see if you guys can hear this pop. Did you guys Wasn't hear that? It was super loud. Yeah, it was a soft pop. It was a soft pop. But it did pop. Yep. So I want you guys to see. I kind of opened it up and see this ball right here that comes out of the socket. So you kind of just open it up, right? And you should be able to kind of take your knife and just kind of release it from the actual turkey. So Joel. Yes. That thigh is looking a little pink. This one? Yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Really? But if it did look a little pink, right? It's a little bit on the bone, but it would still rest and it would go. But if it right. did, we have a little, you want to show Here, that? Here's your trick. Yep. If the turkey, especially the legs, aren't quite done, grab a sheet tray. Yes. In a cooling rack. Yes. I actually never use my cooling rack as an actual cooling rack. I only no. use it for roasting meat. Totally true. But it's sold in the baking section as a cooling rack. Uh, what that does is allows air to come up underneath the turkey. And mm -hmm. you'll stick any pieces that mm -hmm. aren't quite cooked all the way through, skin side up, on this roasting rack, and you'll put it into the oven. I would start with like 20 more minutes. Yeah. And this is because, again. So you could go like this. Yeah, is what you're saying. just like that. But we don't need to. This, I, I honestly think it's perfect. I would want mine done. Really? Yeah. But the dark meat has a little hint to it. I know. Throw it in there for it a little is, bit. It's, it's we'll pull it out <laughs> for a sec. So <laughs> then I've t done the exact same side to the other leg and thigh, right? So now it's completely clean, and we've got the breasts, and we've got our wings. Cool. Yep. And the wings are just like your arms. You just want to find the joint, mm -hmm. right? And just kind of. So that would be your elbow. That would be your elbow. So you can guys just see, I'm just kind of cutting between the ball and the joint right there. Are you going to plate this up nice? Or am I expected to? I feel like you plate things nicer <laughs> than I. So yeah, while Joel's doing that, I've, we've got some, I, do, I don't know, I believe in an edible garnish. So what that means is that anything that you would put on the plate yeah. is either you cooked with it yes. or you could eat it. Like, yes. I don't want a big chunk of curly kale. Like. Absolutely. I mean, I would eat curly kale raw, but. Yeah. But um, so we'll, we'll just do some little zhuzhing and. Yeah, zhuzh it up. Put some, you could put apple slices on this. You could oh, do just, I mean, we're just going to do some fresh herbs. I am I like not it. getting As fancy schmancy with this. So. Oh yeah, and we've got some cute. Oh, we got apples. Cute from Sarah little Grant. apples. Hunter. If you ever want to know how our catalogs and everything look so amazing, you can thank Sarah Grant. Sarah She's Hunter. All, Sarah Hunter, thank you. <laughs> we have Sarah lots of Sarah Hunter. Sarahs. We have lots of Sarahs. These are cute little apples, and I have been told that they're not crab apples, and you can eat these. We're in Washington is that true? State. We have apples. It, really? I'll, I'll cut I would one take and those eat. down in one bite. <laughs> That's nothing for me. Okay, so I have my sacrifice towel here. Yep. Um, and this is so it doesn't move. Right. This, this is the point of carving the turkey where the turkey starts to slide yeah. and be kind of, you know. It's totally the hardest part. Yes, it's absolutely the hardest part. So there's two breasts and they're coming down the actual breast plate. What bone is this, Meredith? That's the wishbone. That's the wishbone, I love it. Uh, we have a question from Angelina, spelled exactly like my wife. So oh, I wonder if it is. Wondering her. if it's her. <laughs> How long do you let the turkey sit before you start carving? So about forty-five minutes to an hour. Yeah, we... I would say if you're in a pinch, minimum yes. twenty minutes. Yes, minimum. absolutely. Um, but I will let mine go, especially a bird. So this was like a fourteen-pound yes. bird. I would. I mean, I would go about forty-five minutes to an hour. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because it's hot. Yep. <laughs> It's hot. So I'm taking, just so everyone can see, and I know it's tough to, to do this while it's facing me. So I'm following the shape of the bone, right? So yeah. see, if you guys can see, I'm starting down here. There's a bone right here. And I'm just hugging the side of the bone with my knife. Long swoops. Long swoops, exactly. Right? And then I'm going to kind of open it up so you guys can see. This is hard, it's hard to, to do on camera. That's OK. <laughs> So to Meredith's point, beautiful. I'm doing nice, beautiful swoops, and I'm just using the tip of my knife. Yeah. 
right? And you're gonna have some, some guys left over here. You know what, that's why you're the chef and you get to eat those. Of course, and that's the best part. So earlier there was a, a question about, or I saw one when I was looking at the Facebook page this morning about um, brining birds and the gravy being really salty. Mm. Um, I find that when I wet brine I've my bird that. that the yeah. drippings are kind of salty. So oh. before, if you're worried about that, yes. before you start making the gravy in your pan, I would take a little spoon and taste those drippings. Everything's cooked, it's cool to eat. I would taste the drippings. And if it does take too salty, That's a good question. then I would That's a new one. dump it out and like then that. start my roux with butter. Yep, I like that. All right guys, so I'm pulling off the other breast here. Again, long strides using the tip of the mm -hmm. knife, kind of hugging the bone and letting this kind of lobe of turkey just kind of fall apart. Yep. That's amazing. And the nice thing about this cutting board or any cutting board that has this moat in it, it you're not going to get <laughs> a river of juices down your counters. Exactly. Now, while the turkey's still hot, I like to pick the carcass yep. and get all those beautiful turkey bits off of it. Anything you missed, you can kind of just get in there. This is called the oyster. I think this is the best part. Oh, it's so, sure. so good. Right, so I'm just kind of picking this. But again, if this doesn't look nice enough for you, although I think it looks gorgeous, you can throw it into a soup. You can throw yep. it into S tomorrow's sandwiches. sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. So we're kind of just getting every last bit really important. Yep. And again, these are the best bits. Of and Joel, do you save your turkey carcass? Is that a joke? Of course. Is that of course a joke? He saves it. Yes, I put this in a big stock pot. All Clad makes really good ones. We have a ton of different brands. Yeah. Um, and then I cover it with liquid. Yep. And it, it's really fantastic. So this right here can absolutely be saved. And we'll just kind of put this to the side. I want to make sure the cameras can pick up what we're doing next. So we've kind of got our turkey kind of pickings and I'm just tossing it on the board with all of our beautiful juices. And you want to hit this with a little bit of salt, Meredith? Absolutely. Beautiful. This is not the salt that Joel is using to salt his turkey. Yes. You never want to cross those you put your brining, dry brining, anything raw meat salting in its own dish because then that's going to get let go at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, you start with fresh salts. And we have a question from Alina. How, in advance, how long in advance do you need to take out a frozen turkey for it to thaw? Should it thaw at room temp or in the fridge? Definitely in the fridge. Yep, absolutely. Um, room temp is just for the day of when you're letting it come to room temperature before you roast. Um, like I said, for this 14 pound, usually when you get them, if you're getting it solid, solidly frozen from the grocery store, I would, I mean, I would always err on the side of too long, maybe three days, yep, yep, totally. maybe four days. Um, so that's a good question. I'm with you on that. But cool. all my turkeys I've bought in the last couple of years, what I come in what I call permafrost. So not frozen solid, but they're definitely frosty. Absolutely. So I'm just slicing the turkey now, right? And again, using long strides. Mm -hmm. This is why this knife matters so much. If your skin is not as crispy as you want it, I think this one is perfect. Yeah. Um, you, you can, can absolutely, yeah, you can absolutely put it back on that drying rack. And by the way, you want to check our dark meat? Yes. Um, and just kind of recrisp it in the oven. So that's going right on. Perfect. And Joel's doing a great job of plating. Am I? I don't like doing this table side. I present the turkey. Yes. And then I take it back into the kitchen. Ah. And then I do this behind the scenes and then come out to the table with it looking pretty because nobody needs that pressure. Yeah, I hear you. It's a little bit too much, too much theta. Okay, so past that guy here. So we have our thighs that are a little bit more brown for, uh, for our girl, Meredith. You know, I'm just looking out for everybody. Yep, beautiful. So with these guys, you can absolutely slice them. So what I like to do is just find the joint and it should just kind of cut down like butter. Oop, let me just there find you it. go. There we go. Do you serve a whole drumstick like a Renaissance fair? Yeah. <laughs> and then everybody gets to fight over it. My brother likes that one. <laughs> but you look a little crazy eating it. You do. So again, I'm finding that joint. Right, and you guys yep. can kind of see it right You're not cutting there. through bone. Nope. You're, yep. It sh if it's hard to cut, you're doing it wrong. Yep. Right. Pull the knife back out. Use your hands to open up the leg a little bit more. Yeah. And then go back for it. We have a question from Jane. Bring it, Jane. I don't have a nice roasting pan with a rack. Can I still get the same results using a cookie sheet with a cooling rack? Mm. Absolutely. 
you are going to uh, have a lot of drippings that accumulate. So I would say if you have any sort of deep roasting pan, baking dish, something like that, use that. But yep. then I use same mirepoix, onions, celery, carrots. Leave them in big chunks. Put yes. those down first and set your turkey on top of that. Yeah, I mean, to Meredith's point, it is a absolutely shallow dish to be making all this. Yeah, you, can't you get do a the lot gravy. of drippings. So I'm a big roasting rack person. It's worth the investment. But can it work? 100% it can yeah. work. Yeah. But I would, I would, if you don't have, I would say the rack is easier to get around than a nice deep absolutely. vessel. Absolutely, yeah. So, so I want everyone to see what I'm doing vessel. with the thighs here. I'm taking the tip of my knife, putting it right on the bone, and just kind of cutting it away. And I cut around the bone. Yeah. And then I just pick the bone and put it with my sandwich or soup turkey meat. Do you want to finish off the gravy? Yeah. So the gravy's been bubbling around. I've been kind of playing with the heat just a little bit, keeping it at a nice low bubble um, and stirring it. Yes. So now I'm going to take that same chinois. Yep. Such a crucial tool. Into a good old Pyrex. So they're showing you that anybody can do this by yourself. That's why I like something large like this and putting it into a vessel that I don't have to hold this. Totally. I want it to be in a place where... Something super secure. Yeah, secure, because I need both hands to lift up this roasting yes. pan. Need help? You got it? No, I got it. I just used towels that I <laughs> fold up, and then I go right back through... Oh, look at that. ...the chinois. Looks like caramel. It I mean, does. That's, that's when you know you've done gravy right. That looks so good. So, bottom of the pan is clean because we've scraped up all of it. Yes. That's another... It's a good uh, sign, dude. It's a good sign, and well, it's another perk of doing your gravy in here because the pan's on its way to being oh, clean. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so we've got our juices. You kind of lift that up and you press. You got yep. it? Yep. So you just kind of press out all the goodness, and you can see that's perfectly thick. If it's too thick, you can add a little bit more stock mm -hmm. or a glug of water. All right, Jane. I don't have uh, the right roasting pan. That's with what oh, we, we already yeah, talked to Jane. About. So Jane, hopefully that answers. Thanks, Jane. It. Hopefully Thank that you, was Jane. helpful. Okay, perfect. So our turkey is plated. Yep. It means it's ready to go. Yep. And you're going to show me how to kind of judge the plate. So make it gorgeous. I chopped up some herbs. Okay. I picked some thyme. Should I go some, herbs over the top? Yeah, I just like herbs over the top. Oh, look at that. I mean, and that's those, a joy. And these cute little apples. What are you do they're not that? crab apples. They're so cute. They're so, I don't know. Let's let's you taste them. them. Do you want to try one and see if you like the flavor of it? I'm curious. I feel like it's going to be tannic, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's good. It tastes like honey crisp. That's really good. Oh, I like that. So maybe I'll we'll just do some apple halves. Oh, you want me to take it? Thank you. Cool. Maybe we'll just do some apple halves on here. Make it look kind of fallish. I love that. Oh my gosh, a food stylist would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Sarah Hunter would not like, would not approve. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But we're chefs. Let's be honest. We have, we're bringing the herbs through one more time. We yes. had them in the bottom of the roasted pan. We had them in the turkey. Yes. We have them in the gravy. It's we everywhere. We have them in the butter. Why not garnish with them? Absolutely. Oh yeah. I'm no, we didn't do, Joel. Would we not Taste do? it. Yeah, it will be good. But good point. Let's try it. Fresh spoons. This way we need, know if we need to season it some more. Actually. I told you. It's golden, baby. It's golden. We're money. <laughs> All right. Yep, clean up the side of that. Make it nice, presentable. So gravy here. Yep. Right there. I love a good gravy boat. I love what you do with the apples. Do you want to put some bigger herbs over the top? Like a little tuck sure, in? Sure. Tuck in some fresh thyme. You don't want to go too herby. I don't know. Is this getting too 80s? <laughs> no, Maybe. that looks nice. No, that's beautiful. That that's looks nice. nice. You, yeah. You could do some lemon wedges because, again, we had lemon in our roasting pan with this. Yes. This looks awesome. What is wrong with the drama of the wing? Why does it go back into the stock pot? There's just not as much meat on it. I, you can also I have that it. as a snack. I served it. That's legit. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. The, the wing has... I, there, to Mara's point, there's not a ton of meat on there, yeah. but it's delicious. And some oh. people like to, I mean, it's a wing. It's Usually just, it's the cook's snack. Yeah, absolutely. What else we got? By the way, day after Thanksgiving snack for me, take this leftover gravy if you have any. 
I know this sounds <laughs> ridiculous. Put a little dab in some mayo for to make a gravy oh. mayo for your Thanksgiving Yum. sandwiches. All this extra meat to die for. Yum. Awesome. So Yum. I know we've got limited time left. If there's any other questions about specifically the turkey, let us know. We've got lots of good programming coming to you guys mm -hmm. live, not just today, but this week, all week. It's going to be great, and next week. But well, and also if you live next near one of our stores, yeah. we have some last-minute Thanksgiving classes being taught. So. Get online to SirLatob.com and look up yeah. the cooking class. Yeah, we have we have ones that are kind of like new age recipes with yeah. Bon Appetit. Yeah. We have our classic recipes that are the ones that tested by us and they're delicious. Yeah, and you'll get to learn hands on how to do all this carving and everything. So absolutely, and you get twenty percent off pretty much everything in the store if you take the class. That's true. So if you do need your roasting rack or a gravy boat or a carving knife, you're good to go. So the next segments we have coming up, we've got Friday. It's all about the sides. Mm. I love side dishes in Thanksgiving. I think that's all, if I could just have sides, I'd yes, be happy. Yes, I'd be happy with all the sides. <laughs> Monday, we're going to attack pie, Yeah. Mm. which Meredith's good with, I'm not great with, so you'll show me your way around it. But yeah. pies, desserts, we'll talk everything around that. Wednesday, it's going to be a last minute, any Q&A that you guys have yep. any questions. I know it's the day before this Thanksgiving. This is our hotline. It's Joel and I. We're here for you, baby. Helping so you, you out. You come in, you write in, you call in, whatever you need to do, yep. you get to us. <laughs> we are in your back pocket. We're absolutely here. Um, and make sure to hashtag delicious is simple. Because it is. Yeah, I know this feels like it took a lot, but it was easy. Yeah. Right? I mean, I know yep. it's not just easy for a chef. Anyone can do this. No, it's like six ingredients. Yes. Don't overthink it. It's Thanksgiving. Have an absolute ball. And again, Sir Latab is here for you. Meredith and myself are here for you. Enjoy the holiday if we don't see you next time. But if we do, until then.